It is 6.30 in the morning. Yeah, boy. We and we're all even. No sleep. No sleep. From we... Amphiumas to the four hour drive. Yep. This is when you came to Louisiana. Yes, so sir. The four hour drive for spiders. Legend has it that deep within Louisiana wilderness, a silent specter slinks in the shadows, unseen by human eyes. We're heading into the Kasachi National Forest, a 600,000 acre expanse of the roughest terrain we've ever seen, chasing a wild lead that will hopefully produce a giant centipede. All right guys, well today we just drove four hours, four heckin' hours in Louisiana, early morning. That's how you know I'm hyped, because I'm not an early morning person. We are going to be looking for some of the coolest invertebrates that Louisiana has to offer. We got some tarantulas, we got some serious centipedes, we got scorpions. Uh, Louisiana is the absolute best when it comes to some bugs, if you're in the right area. And today we are finally in that right area. And uh, Spencer, hopefully we get you something too. Uh, the, I, I'm, I'm getting that centipede, baby. I'm getting it. Not if I get it first. No. With a long drive and expansive habitat in front of us, we're going to need a little bit more than a lead. Texas redheads are extremely rare in Louisiana, so we're going to need expert help. This is CJ Hillard. CJ is a herpetologist studying some of Louisiana's rarest snakes here in Kasachi, and he and his team have seen these centipedes during their surveys. Today, we're actually looking for uh, some invertebrate diversity in the Texas brown tarantula and the Texas redhead. Uh, centipedes. They get maybe 10 to 12 inches and really nice like bright orange body with a dark head and they are they are just very cool. They are going to live basically under the rocks sometimes under logs and pretty much devour anything that they can catch and overpower which at their size is a lot of things. I've seen them uh, tear apart mice and lizards and small snakes. They are really a, a force to be reckoned with and it's really a really cool species out here that not many people know about, not many, not many people actually target. So we're just trying to find one out here today and get y'all some shots. The hunt is on. CJ's spot is a rocky clearing in between a few cliffs. With any luck, one of these giant myriapods lies out here, waiting to be uncovered. I get it, I'm, I'm like that sometimes. Do that. Right. Mm. First, wait, 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 anything? Yeah, get that out of there. I'm not flipping anything. Why not? I, I mean, I'm flipping, but I'm not finding anything under my flips. Yeah, I'll film you. You had tarantula, I'd be happy with anything. I'm just happy. I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> oh, it's recording. Greetings, internet. We're going to bully Spencer today. Spencer. Yeah. I'm telling your audience I'm going to bully you, okay? He's from North Carolina. Can you believe that? Cringe. Oh my god. Look at him. He's from North Carolina. Yeah, why couldn't it be South Carolina, right? North or Carolina. North Dakota. Absolutely. Just, ugh. He, he, he drinks unsweet tea. Can, <laughs> he drinks unsweet tea. I'm kidding you not. Let me tell you, flipping in this environment is tough. And so far, I've had zero luck finding anything. Zach's found a dozen scorpions so far. I have yet to see a scorpion in the wild, so I hear them yelling, scorpion, and I'm like about to go run over to check, and they're like, don't, don't come over here, flip rocks over there, because we want to see if we find the centipede, you know. Zach is very much looking for the centipede. I am just hoping to get as many cool inverts as I can. I'm, I'm a little jealous, I'm a little jealous, but here's the thing. If I'm the first one to catch a centipede, it's all gonna be worth it. It's all gonna be worth it. I, I, can, I can pass up the, the missed scorpions and tarantulas if, if I'm the first to catch a centipede. Yeah. Uh, I mean, big to me. All right. I know he took off. Oh, whoa. That's, that's a good size. Ah, uh, he got away from me now. He's under there. Come on. Oh, come on. That is so. He's in there. Yeah. Okay. Right, wait, if you're running back this way, he should have to come out of the open, huh? Oh, there he is. He's coming back. That, that, that's easier. Yeah. yeah. I got him. I'll just uh, let him get up a little bit. That's all. That's very acceptable. Both the adult. Ah, he's biting it. Jeez, no, I got him into a worse position there. <laughs> Did you see how big that thing was? Well, there, 
they're definitely here. I mean, I feel for Zach. You know, that was a perfect opportunity, man. And you missed it. Ah, oh, it's fine. It's fine. I still have a shot to be the first to catch a centipede. I feel for Zach, but I still want to be first. Another challenging day out in the field. It is hot. There's not much shade. Humidity is very high. And the terrain is incredibly rough. You can see them back there. It's hilly. It's rocky. Some places are muddy. Some places are covered in pine needles. And it is tough going out here. Kasachi is a longleaf pine forest. What that means is there's plenty of trees, but not a lot of shade. With temperatures pushing 95 degrees Fahrenheit, the hilly, rocky terrain is a brutal hike. So far, I've seen nothing. Signs of life, sure. Burrows, husks of tarantulas. But as far as anything presentation worthy, nothing. In a national forest this big, that's to be expected. There's so much habitat and life that it's next to impossible to track down a specific target. Even with the hundreds of rocks in this clearing, we've flipped pretty much everything. So we're gonna head to another site CJ knows about. On the way there, we're gonna enjoy some well-needed AC and take a quick pit stop for a water break. All right, we are taking a rest from the heat. A natural spring right here. Ooh. And, uh, CJ said it's drinkable, so we're going to try some natural spring water. How is it? Nice and cool, man. Looks clean. Looks nice. Oh, it's cold. Oh, it is good. Water. The stuff of life. Where there's water, there will be biodiversity. In a spring like this in Kasachi, you can find some pretty neat life nearby. Carnivorous plants. A field full of pitchers and sundews. Something out of every nature nerd's wildest dreams. Even if we don't get a centipede, I want to thank CJ for his help on the trip so far. Because this is an experience I am never going to forget. Scorpion! Wow! Ow, ow. Oh, hold on. He just ran. Let's get on a stick. I feel more comfortable with a stick. I've never worked with one of these guys before. Ready. On the stick. On the stick. On the stick, please. Yes, awesome. Damn it. All right. So I'm just gonna keep him. Oh, I'm a bitch. I'm gonna keep going with that. Right. Wait, hang on, let me center you. All right. Oh, damn it. I oh, here's a tarantula, nice. Oh, look at that. Wow, look at that. He is posing up, he is really mad. <laughs> look at that. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> it's eternal basket. <laughs> All right, buddy. All right, he's pretty pissed, so I'm gonna Keep them on the stick. I don't want to get my hand or face full of those hairs because they'll make me itch for a long time. This is my first ever wild tarantula. Definitely not as big as I would have expected, but uh, this is bigger than any other spider I've worked with. And this is actually not a true spider. These guys are in a different group called the mygalomorphs, and they're characterized by tiny, tiny little eyes on top of their head there. And their fangs are usually huge. They stick out right in the front of their face. Uh, this is a female, I think. Usually I can tell. The males will have these weird big clubs on their petty palps. I'm not seeing that. The abdomen is as big, if not bigger, than the thorax. So I'm pretty sure this is a female here. But she is mad at me, man. Let's see if I poke her again. Let's see if she'll do it. <laughs> She's definitely not happy with being messed with. So we're going to get her back underneath her rock as soon as possible. But this is absolutely incredible to find out in the wild. Louisiana, I wouldn't have expected to find tarantulas here. That is nuts. Okay, so um, I'm starting to get a little worried. Uh, that big centipede that Zach missed is the only one we've seen so far. And that's a problem because 
sure, there's, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of, of rocks out here, but we're running out of rocks to flip. Hopefully, the next spot produces a centipede. If not, we may be out of luck. This is it, the final spot. If we don't find a centipede here, we're done. We took a four hour drive, hiked for hours in the heat for nothing. Well, maybe not totally nothing. The views, the wildlife, everything here is absolutely incredible. But we're here on a mission, and this is our last chance. The clip you're about to see is actually after I flipped the rock. I didn't think to record beforehand, but you'll see what I'm talking about. It's yep, a medium yep, 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 yep. Hang on, let me, let me try it. I got it, I got it, I got it. Uh, dude, you might want to have me try it, I'm being honest. I work with these guys hard. Dude, come on. Don't miss it. He's gonna go up. Make sure he gets into the container. There you go. Ha! Uh -huh. Small one. Nice. <sighs> Giant centipede. Let's go. Let's go. He's creepy looking. Maybe I won't free handle him. Those fangs are big. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a long time coming. It was fabled that these animals lived here in Louisiana. And now I'm sitting here looking at one. And to be honest, it doesn't look like it's real. It almost has a matte finish to its shell, which makes it look like it's made of like porcelain or plastic or something and not a real living animal. But I'll tell you one thing, plastic does not move like this. This, this centipede is as angry as it gets. Uh, I've, I've free handled centipedes before, spiders, things like that. I free handled venomous spiders on this trip, but this guy, I don't want to chance it. I, I, you know, there's a time to attempt something brave and there is a time to be smart. And brave would be synonymous with stupid if I tried to hold this centipede in my bare hands. It's just too fast, it's just too big, and that venom is just too strong. And we are 30 miles from civilization. Um, admittedly, we don't actually have any first aid, like any major first aid on us right now. So if I took a bite from this guy, I would have to just soldier through the pain for 30, 45 minutes before we can get to the nearest hospital where I could actually get some anti-venom. This guy would be a really bad thing to take a bite from. I'm looking at this guy's behavior. I'm seeing just how agitated this animal is and you know, seeing its speed in its habitat. If I chanced a, a, a free handling with this guy, two things would happen. Either he jumps for it, gets into this brush and disappears forever before I can really get a good segment with him, or he gives me a nasty bite and then disappears into the brush. And this is technically the same species, according to science, as the giant desert centipede. And a bite from one of those guys, while not fatal, will almost certainly send you to the hospital. So I would assume that this guy would also probably send me to the hospital. This is a true, true example of just how powerful and crazy nature can be. And I'm so lucky to actually be out here and filming one of these animals in person. Now you look at this guy, he gets his name from that bright red head. And you can probably already tell, this guy would not blend in at all in this environment. And this is intentional. This coloration, aposomatic warning coloration. And this guy has serious, serious venom to back up that coloration. Like, there are a lot of different things that could eat this guy out here, but I imagine most stuff in its right mind would leave this centipede alone. Uh, that goes for me too. Like, <laughs> I, uh, I'm definitely pushing my luck having him in a little container right here next to my hands. I, I don't know for sure if he could bite through this. I would have to think he couldn't. This is not the hardest plastic, but it's hard enough that, you know, I, I saw him kind of bare his fangs on this little corner right here and he couldn't break through. So I would assume that he can't bite through this plastic, but I do want to try and keep my fingers away from where his face is just in case he decides to test the strength of his container and give me a bite because even a little prick on my thumb would send me into a world of hurt and that would not be fun. Now I've worked with centipedes before, but you can just hear the strength in this myriapod. Like all those little clawed feet just scratching and pounding against this container here. This is a force to be reckoned with 
out here in this habitat, this longleaf pine habitat. There is not a whole lot, there's not a whole lot of stuff that this guy wouldn't eat because with the power of the venom this guy has, he can eat things bigger than him easily. I think you can probably hear him scratching against the container there. Yeah. CJ was saying he's seen these guys eat mice, frogs, lizards. We've seen some lizards bigger than this guy out here. He might be able to take those down. And that kind of meal would probably fill him up for a month. These guys don't need to eat super often. And that's simply because they are such efficient, powerful predators out here in this ecosystem that they can overpower prey. That would literally be a feast for multiple animals, let alone one. And he can just chow on that in his little burrow for months on end and digest. Reason centipedes scare the crap out of me like they do is because they are just built as supreme hunters. Tons and tons of legs, all super powerful and grippy. Give this guy a design that allows him to just charge across the landscape like a venomous fanged locomotive. Yeah, the bite, you don't wanna mess with that. I don't know about you, but this is enough to make my skin crawl. So we're gonna go ahead and put him back underneath his rock. So we can go back to hunting all kinds of cool stuff out in this cliff side. Here you are, buddy. Back on your rock. It was one hell of an adventure. We drove late into the night, hoping for a sign of a centipede for Zach. Honestly, this trip taught me a new meaning for the word tired. But as we rounded back towards the parking lot to pick up our gear and call it a night, Zach saw something shiny crossing the road. A giant centipede. It's funny, we spent almost 12 hours hiking and driving through some of the most challenging terrain I've ever seen looking for a centipede, and my body wants nothing more than to just lay in bed for a week now. But looking back, I'd do today over again the exact same way given the chance. We came to Kasachi looking for giant centipedes, but along the way, I found myself. If you want to see Zack's centipede, check out this video right here. And to see the rest of the insane animals we found down in Louisiana, here's a playlist full of Louisiana's deadliest. Until next time, don't forget to get out there and find your adventure.